Lab Guy here. This is uh, the Chief Update number 8. Today is March 13th, 2019. Uh, it's been two weeks since I posted a video and uh, there were uh, things that came up. I had a, a wonderful visit from the host of a famous YouTube channel that has 5.1 million subscribers. I can't wait to see what he produces and what small parts I play in that. That was a most enjoyable day. Uh, many, uh, many video principles were discussed and uh, many demos were performed. So let's hope for the best that the fellow got usable footage of uh, yours truly, the lab guy, in his natural habitat. Complete insanity. So, in regards to the delay, uh, I had made a mistake on the schematic and built it into the board. First, I want to apologize to my friend Howard, who has been assisting me remotely from his home in another state, an excellent engineer, great friend, for his patience with me over this time. The results of the mistake were unexplainable, needless to say, and great deals of magic smoke were released from many components over and over. It was most uh, frustrating, and for me personally, it was depressing. Um, but uh, day before yesterday, I was simply sitting here staring at the schematic of the vertical scan circuit when, like that baseball I saw coming out of the sky, getting bigger and bigger, it finally hit me. I had put the two totem pole transistors in the opposite places. Just a stupid mistake. I, it wasn't that I had put them in the wrong places. I had assigned the wrong alias numbers to the symbols on the schematic and I always build precisely to the schematic. So that's behind us now. Uh, like I said, day before yesterday, um, on that day and yesterday, most of yesterday, a little bit of today, has been spent ironing out literally wrinkles. I will go into a description of the vertical circuit. I will review that and uh, we will discuss that further in a moment. I also want to say hi to my friend Troy Walters on the YouTube channel Troy's Visual Arts. He has constructed his own iconoscope camera and I have been trying to help him uh, remotely from another country and uh, there is uh, obviously an equal amount of frustration going on there and I apologize to Troy for all of the the madness this uh, seems to induce uh, but we'll work our way through it Troy you hang in there and uh, in the end uh, hopefully we'll both be a little smarter or not. <laughs> uh, so um, let's move on and look at the uh, schematics of the vertical scan circuit now and I'll walk you through how it is supposed to work and then we'll look at the waveforms and I'll show you the actual uh, resulting circuit board in its nearly final form. Ignore everything above this line. Going into the vertical deflection circuit, it's as simple as it can possibly be and do an extremely good job at what it does. Coming in on the left side here is the vertical drive pulse from the sink generator. This is vertical drive that is timed with horizontal to produce 2 to 1 interlace RS170A sync. That is color without a color burst. This will allow the video produced by this generator to actually be mixed in an NTSC color editing environment and it will technically have color frame except for the missing burst but an editor will know how to fix that. If it was running true 60 Hz RS170 standard it would be running 60 frames per second instead of the colors frame rate of 59.94 it's merely a technical detail. The TV monitors this will be connected to 
don't care. They just lock to it. So coming in, is this pulse pulsing low for nine TV lines 60 times a second or 59.94 times per second. It's an active low pulse. I use an inverter to turn it into an active high pulse. This active high pulse turns this switch on for nine TV lines at the start of each field. When this switch turns on, it discharges this capacitor, which charges up to some number of volts every 16.67 milliseconds, which is 1 over 60. It is charged by this current source, which provides a constant charging current to make a linear scanning ramp. On this test point, the ramp travels from zero volts to whatever the required voltage is to set the size. It's variable from about two volts up to about six or seven volts. It's running somewhere between those two extremes. There is an adjustment to set the current, to set the size of the ramp. The ramp is then AC coupled over this one microfarad capacitor combined with a DC reference voltage created by this voltage divider and potentiometer that is connected from plus 12 volts to minus 12 volts and in theory should sit somewhere in the middle at zero volts. It is adjustable about plus and minus one half of a volt. This allows for taking the raster on the tube and moving it up and down to center it. It has a lot of range. It works very well. The ramp is applied to the op amp, which acts as a buffer between the, the capacitor and this power amplifier stage, which has uh, a medium input impedance and a very low output impedance. It's two power transistors, which works very, very well when you put this transistor on the bottom and this one on the top and not the other way around. The other way around is a smoke generator. If that's what you're looking for, by all means, switch the transistors. You'll make all the smoke you can handle. So back to this circuit. The ramp voltage comes through, is current amplified by this Class A amplifier, and fed to the deflection yoke, which is connected from here to here. The return of the deflection yoke comes around this way, through this 36 ohm resistor and goes to ground. The resistor generates a proportional voltage based on the current flowing through the coil of the yoke. The yoke has the properties of 60 ohms of resistance, 51 and a fraction millihenries, and 590 nanofarads of stray capacitance. For you people who would like to plug that into your simulation software and see how that works out. I would be interested in the results. When the yoke is connected here and is uncompensated, that is this capacitor and resistor are not present, the waveform rings and oscillates. The, the stage is unstable. We only want the yoke to respond to the sawtooth waveform running at 60 Hertz. So a damping resistor and capacitor are placed across the yoke which have the effect of damping out the ringing energy. High energy is AC coupled and literally shorts the yoke out in a way and the 680 ohm resistor shunts away any extra energy that would feed that ringing and in the end we get a beautiful uh, low going minus 12 volt flyback pulse when the ramp falls and then it jumps back up and then scans between um, minus 100 milliamps and plus 100 milliamps or so on the Cyclops monitor which is what I use to visualize scanning. And that is in, in essence the arrangement of this vertical deflection system. It contains a total of four transistors and one op amp. It has taken quite a bit of labor to get here because of the aforementioned mistake. So, 
Now that you have a general idea of the circuit arrangement, let's go look at the waveforms that are produced right here. We will be looking at the driving voltage going into the yoke and the driving pulse going into this transistor. On the upper trace, we have the horizontal drive pulse. It's been inverted in the 74HCO4 inverter and turned into a positive going pulse. It goes from 0 volts up to plus 5 volts. The scope is triggering on this pulse. The bottom trace is DC referenced at this point. This is one, one division below the center line is 0 volts. DC coupled we can see that the deflection waveform goes positive almost 5 volts, not quite 4.5 volts in this case. You'll see the result of that on the Cyclops in a moment. At the time of the reset, when the ramp generator is reset to zero, you can see that the ramp flies back. You can see it here. It flies back and goes down three divisions down to minus 12 volts. It's actually two divisions from zero, three divisions from the top of the waveform. So it shoots it to minus 12 volts very quickly. It recovers very quickly within nine television lines, about three quarters of a millisecond, which is excellent. And then the scan resumes and is a beautiful straight line which is what we want because we want the speed of the scanning to move down the screen at a constant speed. The circuit is working excellently. Now we're looking at the front of the Cyclops uh, deflection visualizer project and we're seeing the resulting scan produced by the horizontal circuit and the new vertical circuit. It's beautifully rectangular, it's stable, blanking is applied so that we have a beautiful raster. I'll demonstrate the, si the vertical size control for you. We can make it bigger and we can make it smaller. If we don't like where it's positioned, we can move it up and down significantly. So now let's take a close look at the setup and the circuit board. Of course here's Cyclops, my old friend. The deflection yoke that will be removed from Cyclops and moved to the to the chief itself and will be replaced by this turkey over here which has completely different characteristics. For all of the scan circuitry this is the board. So uh, give me a moment and I'll pull off the probes hopefully without blowing everything to bits. Come on let go. There we go. That's one. Take this one off. That's two. Alrighty then. So, this is the entire board as it is right now. You'll note that I added some pilot lights to remind me that the power is on. Over here, once again in review, is the sink generator. Some pulse shaping uh, one shots. The horizontal scan circuit on this half of the board, that way. All of this right here is the vertical scan that took up an entire 21 inch screen. It all fits there inside of perhaps four to six square inches. Everything is connected with some brand new clip leads because I got tired of those short stubby leads causing me nothing but grief, potential uh, problems. And um, that is literally the entire board. The deflection yoke hooks at this end. This is high voltage, high, high voltage finger quotes there, of 35 to 50 volts for horizontal scan. Uh, this is the blanking output going to the grid 
input of the uh, CRT. In this case, it'll go to the monoscope and this connector brings in plus and minus 12 volts DC at something below 100 milliamps on each side. And that is essentially the uh, top side of the board. And here it is again with everything disconnected. The underside is a bit busy, but not overly so as these things can be. Over here is horizontal scan. It's almost, almost invisible. And the vertical, the bottom of the vertical scan side. The yoke connects to the terminal strip, the four inside connectors for the yoke. The two outside connectors were reserved for separate power supplies for deflection. This is the horizontal output transistor. This capacitor has a small resistor across it, which is the uh, damping circuit for the yoke. These are the two power transistors that I had installed backwards. The op amp, the centering control, the size control, the current transistor, the constant current source, and the field effect transistor that resets the scanning capacitor, which is this little yellow guy here at 6.8 microfarads. I chose that one because with 2 milliamps, 6.8 microfarads will charge to 5 volts in 16, roughly 16.6 .6 milliseconds. And of course the tolerance on these kinds of capacitors is enormous so you can't re you should never really plan to use them in a timing circuit of any accuracy but since the current's adjustable it's it's only a minor detail pulse transformer for coupling to the horizontal output transformer pretty straightforward pretty simple pretty clean we have the 5 volt regulator on its heat sink over here during the testing phase when they transistors were switched and would kill the 12 volt supply, I would lose 5 volts to the sink generator which would stop the pulses, making the smoke generating uh, capacities of this device so much better. We got so much more smoke that way. So there you go. This concludes this update on the project I call The Chief, my Indian head test pattern generator. I want to thank all of my subscribers for watching and please come back. If you liked the episode, give it a big thumbs up, spread the word, and thank you. Thank you for watching. Without your attention, I'd be less motivated to make these videos, and I hope that there's valuable information that you can take away and apply to your own projects. So go out there and do something fantastic today, create something original, and this is Lab Guy, signing off.